good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. Now I know what you're thinking. This isn't a Conqueror's Blade video. And there's a good reason for that. It's Because uh, about two weeks ago, World of Warships sent me an email saying, Hey, come back to World of Warships and we'll give you an October Revolution. Or, well, what they said is they'd give me a Tier 5 Premium. And I said, okay, well, I could use a Tier 5 Premium. Even though I haven't played the game in two years, I'm always willing to take free stuff. So I logged in, I got the Tier 5 Premium, and the email also said if I won 15 matches in a row, they'd give me a free Tier 9. So I played in 115, or not in a row, sorry. If I won 15 matches, they'd give me a free Tier 9. Now, they gave me this one. So, alright, that's, that's good. But, I, I haven't played this game in about two years, because... I got really tired of my battleship being completely overshadowed by a destroyer, right? Like they would sit there from smoke and shoot at me or a cruiser from smoke and shoot at me and uh, I just, you know, you just couldn't do anything about it. You, you're like even on, on my Kerr first, I'd have, you know, a secondary build and uh, it wouldn't matter. They just wreck you. So I had no intention of coming back. In fact, I used to have a midway, but when they allowed me to, when they nerfed the hell out of the carriers, which I used to love playing, I sold all my carriers, and eventually I wound up rebuying the, redoing the Ranger, but I, I got rid of all my carriers, and I picked up an Alaska instead, because I used all that XP to get this Alaska here. And then I heard they were going to bring submarines into the game. And the big joke is, of course, well, there's already submarines in the game. They're called destroyers because a destroyer is, is you know, you can't see it unless it's in like five or six miles. It's got a zillion torps and, uh, you know, it, it, it smokes up and, and, and uh, shoots from smoke. Like you just, it's, it's, it's world of destroyers, not world of, of warships. Or you could even call it, since they gave smoke to uh, cruisers, you know, it's World of Smoke Ships. So I'd pretty much said, well, I had enough of this game and I'm done. And then I was able to, to try the submarines out. Now, right now, you can only play them in ranked battles. And uh, I have not been able to get past you know, because I suck. I haven't been able to get past the uh, the bronze uh, rankings, especially mostly playing submarines. I did play a little bit of destroyers whenever my submarine runs out, because right now they'll you get a you roll the dice and you get a chance at having a submarine for three days. So uh, I decided I wanted to try the submarine out, and I was I'm pretty skeptical of, of it still, although less skeptical than I was. Uh, because when I first saw videos a year and a half ago of, of the submarine and homing torpedoes and and them arcing shots around uh, islands and things like that, I thought that was broken as hell, but I hadn't played it yet. So I think they've managed to balance it to the point now where even with, it, you know, it has it's balanced with the homing torpedoes. I know you're going, what? Homing torpedoes are balanced. And I, I also agree that it doesn't need homing torpedoes, but someone over there has a homing torpedo B up his ass, and he just has to have homing torpedoes in the game. So they balance it so that the homing torpedoes wouldn't be OP. And they did that by nerfing the living hell out of them. So before we get started, let's get into some timestamps. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to have a, a bit of analysis followed by uh, gameplay footage uh, pointing out. Um, things I found in my analysis section. Uh, I'd like to point out that this is two years from me coming back to the game. So this is a review based on my experience as a returning player. Now, obviously you as uh, a player who has been playing this for a while might know uh, more about this than I do, but I think I've got a pretty decent handle of what I'm about to talk about, at least based on tier six submarines, since I was not able to get any higher than rank two in the, in the bronze uh, league. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first one to look at is the torpedoes uh, of the submarines. If you look, its maximum damage is 7,000, right? 
and that's on the uh, the the German boat, and its uh, maximum range is nine clicks. Right now, you add into that the concealment of five point six. It's pretty, you know. It's pretty short, right? And you only get four of them in the tubes. Now you compare that with a destroyer. All right, you take a look at your destroyers, your tier six destroyers. Like you look at my Icarus here, and you'll see that my torpedoes fifteen thousand. So basically, it does half the damage of a destroyer torpedo, and I get ten destroyer torpedoes. So per torpedo I do half the damage and I get four torpedoes in a in a submarine launch and I get ten in a destroyer launch. So if you look at those numbers that's pretty intense, right? So in that regard it is balanced because you know if you compare destroyers with with uh, you know submarines the destroyer is still pooping out an amazing amount of damage compared to a poor submarine. Now, when you... <laughs> now, now this is what really bugs me. Like, you're looking at a destroyer that can poop out that kind of damage in torpedoes, can fire from smoke, and, uh, you know, is undetectable until they shoot, and then they just pop smoke. And people are okay with that. Like, that's why I left the game. I just had enough of it, you know. And, and... They're, they're less okay with, with aircraft carriers flying around, you know, that don't do anywhere near the kind of damage that this destroyer does. But, you know, they're okay with a, you know, a destroyer firing from 13 kilometers away from smoke and just forcing your battleship to turn around. And uh, so I was kind of worried about, you know, these things being overpowered. Now you look at the USA one and you'll see that it, it does you know, 7,800 damage, it does 86 knots, it's 11.5 kilometers, but its concealment is 6.4. So what I found as I played is that, you know, the the German submarine obviously has to get closer, and to help it with that, it's mods, right? You have the dive capacity mod. So when I'm when I'm playing this I take the dive capacity mod and with my captain skills I also take uh, superintendent to get the extra uh, extra uh, you know uses of those mods and then of course because you're a submarine you want to be underwater as long as possible and you want to be going as fast as possible and of course you want you know lots of torpedo damage with the uh, with the USA submarine is a little different. I didn't take superintendent because, quite frankly, I find the the mod that it has, which is this one or this ability, to be not as useful. I, I just you know I can usually if you if you if you're smart you can usually get underwater in time. And the strategy that the two submarines use are, are a little different. Because you have such a lower range on the um, German submarines, and I'm going to show you examples of this, the German submarines have to get closer, right? And so, because you have to get closer, you know, you want obviously more dive time. And you get six minutes and 40 seconds of dive time with the German submarine and six minutes of dive time with the American submarine. But with the German submarine, you get this thing, right? that gives you a pause in your battery usage for about 30 seconds. Now I used to use this, I used to save it for, okay, I gotta save it for when I'm almost out of battery power and I'm underwater and I'm getting depth charged. And I find that that, that isn't gonna work. And you're gonna, what? And, and that's because it's got a 90 second reload time. So if you wanna get that extra, you know, three uses of this reserve battery unit, the, the extra 90 seconds of, of uh, battery time, you have to use them a little earlier. So what I'll generally wind up doing is I'll, I, I started using the first one if I was diving and I knew I was going to be underwater for at least 30 seconds to a minute, I would use it, right, like if aircraft 
were coming at me or something, right? And I did that because I found that having more battery power when I do have a battleship sitting on top of me was more desirable than saving that for like an emergency use, right? So I would I would try and use them up a little earlier. And then by the time I had a battleship or a destroyer sitting on top of me, I might have only had one left, but that's all you need because eventually you're gonna hit zero and you have to surface, you have no choice. Uh, so if you if you can use those to get yourself into combat easier, uh, you know, you'll get the benefit of having that 90 seconds of, of, of battery power, extra 90 seconds. And um, you'll find that uh, you, you don't recharge very fast. So you, you're never, once you start using up your battery, you know, it's going to be highly unlikely that you'll get it charged up before the end of the, end of the match, right? So use them early, use them often. Don't don't spare them, right? Uh, this thing is useful, the hydrophones, because I've on numerous occasions I found myself diving, going down to um, you know maximum depth, and you know trying to get away, and I need to know where the other ship is so I can avoid them, right? And that's the other thing I've learned is that rather than trying to break away back towards your own lines, you know that's where they think you're going to go. So I've started to break away deeper in, right? So rather than breaking away and trying to turn around and, 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 and go back, I go forward and I try and, uh, you know, come up to operational depth to see where they are. And if I can give them a rear tube shot, I will. But, you know, the whole idea of trying to go back to your own lines, I always found doesn't work because that's where they're looking for you right and when you're underwater you're only doing 15 knots all right you're only doing 15 knots you're not going to get away right like <laughs> if you ever watch u571 there's that scene where you know he, yeah the captain's basically saying a eight knot submarine isn't going to get away from a 30 knot destroyer or something like that right and that's true so i i, I basically i i play play it like once I'm in, you're 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 in. You're not going to get away, and you're going to find that uh, a lot of battleship captains, destroyer captains, uh, like they can they can charge you and sit on top of you, and because you have a also have a minimum shot range, like they can be too close. Your torpedoes don't arm, and so once they figure out where you are and they can sit on top of you, they just have to stay there until you're driven to the surface and then at that point their secondaries will rip you apart right so that's one of the reasons why the subs are not op because once they do get on top of you and you can't get away if you don't break away in time they're going to be sitting on top of you now another reason the submarines are no longer op even with the homing torpedoes besides the fact that their damage is really anemic and they've only got four tubes instead of like 10 is the fact that uh the homing doesn't seem it's, it's not like they'll do like a 90 degree turn and, and keep going right it's it's a very slow anemic turn into your face right so i'm going to show examples of battleships literally dodging homing torpedoes right so when you add all that in together um i think i might have had one match where i had three kills and uh i had one match where i used all my battery power and I think I have a copy of this one. I used all my battery power essentially to, to put seven torpedoes into the battleship and I still didn't kill them, right? So uh, I think in that regard, it's balanced. Now, do I think homing torpedoes are a good idea? No, I don't, I don't like them. Because I think that what they could have done is traditionally submarine torpedoes are actually more dangerous than destroyer torpedoes. And I know this because I was in the Navy for 16 years. Actually, I'm still in the Navy. Anyway, so the, the point is, is that how a torpedo is supposed to work is it goes under the ship, not into the ship. It goes under the ship, it explodes. Uh, an air bubble breaks the back of the ship as the ship collapses. So one torpedo is basically enough to destroy a ship, right? Uh, which is why in World War II, the Americans had a real problem because their their torpedoes weren't exploding, you know? So they would they would just go under the ship and that would be it. So I think what they could have done instead is they could have made the torpedoes like 
20,000 damage, lowered it to 5 miles, maybe increased your time underwater, and that would force the submarines to get close within like 2 miles, launch all four of their torps, and then, you know, you've got destroyers on top of you. So, but that's not the way they decided to go. They decided to go with allowing you to shoot 9 miles and, and home the torpedoes in with a ping. I guess it's balanced. It's balanced because you do half the damage of a of a destroyer submarine. Uh, it's balanced because you can still dodge them. It's balanced because if you look at uh, your equipment and you look at this thing, you'll notice that it will actually remove the ping, right? And a battleship gets a really long, long one, like it's twelve seconds, depending on the battleship. So you can you can you can literally it's like pop and chaff, you know. You can literally uh, dodge a torpedo by popping that at the right time, right? So, in that regard, I think they're balanced now. I don't like how they balance them because I think it wasn't necessary. I think they should have just gone with higher damage torpedoes, shorter ranged, right? But that's not how they decided to go. Okay, that being said, let's uh, let's get into a, some video here. So, the first one to look at is a sub first sub. Submarine in sight. I, I picked this obviously. What I really want to show you about about uh, here is a couple of things that are going to happen, and I'll I'll mention when we get here. So I've got him pinged right now. He's got me pinged. I fired my Torpedo, torps are already tracking. Ahead. He fires his torps are tracking. I pop my uh, repair, and that allows me to um, break his lock. Now, I immediately turn and surface because that will cause the torpedoes to miss. Because I'm not going to be where they were, and, and I'll get more into that in a torpedoes minute. To port. So I come back in, he, sh he fired, but he's not locked, so his just went nowhere. So again, I'm going to try and ping him again. And I don't fire yet because they have such an anemic turning radius, so i got to get back to where he was. So i got to turn back. He manages to ping me. And I get, I suddenly realize at this point, I got pinged by someone behind me. So I immediately surface. And the reason I know I can get away with this is because I know looking around me that I've got all kinds of friendlies. So I surface and I book out of there because I've now got a sub in front of me and a sub behind me. They both got me pinged. And it's a heck of a lot easier to dodge two submarines if you're on the surface running because they can only go 15 knots and I can now do 29. So that's why I, I booked it out of there. Right? It's also a lot harder for them to uh, see me on the surface when they're submerged unless they pop their um, uh, uh, sonar. Now, this guy and I become real close. Now, here's one thing I want to show you. When I turn and I ping this guy, because I'm on the surface and he's submerged, the ping is going to just go right over him. It's not going to hit him, right? So I, I turn, I ping, I miss. And it's always going to miss. You can't ping a submarine that's submerged when you're not submerged. So I submerge. Now I fire my torpedo early, and then I ping him after potting my sonar. I tag him, my, my torpedo starts to track, and now I'm booking it out of there. I'm surfacing because, again, I don't, I don't want him to... I, I want to make him it as hard as possible for him to ping me. Now he can ping me. When you're submerged, you can ping someone off the surface, obviously. And I did get him. Uh, so, sunk. as you can see there, I... I was able to break lock, turn, and uh, surface to get away, right? And I could only get away with that because I was deep in my own my own zone. Now this is another submarine, and I see him to my left. I'm actually going for those uh, ships ahead of me, but I see the sub to my left, and I realize I can't leave him there. So I can tell he's submerged, so I have to submerge. I can't ping him on the surface. I'm going to turn into him pretty quick here. Now, torpedoes also have a minimum distance. All right, so I ping him in the turn. I get the ping. I fire one set. And they're tracking. Now, he doesn't... He doesn't break the lock, so he's probably already used it, so I fire my second set. That's a, a sort of a trick you can use, and it includes some others I'm going to talk about. It, fire one set of torpedoes, wait and see if they break lock. 
so you're holding your second set in reserve. And so that's what I find I have to do. So now what's going to happen with this battleship is he's going to try and break my lock. And again, I'm firing my torpedoes first without getting a lock first. And as long as he's roughly heading toward that zone, I'm not going to do it. Now I do it here because uh, this is prior to me really knowing about this, but basically if he's heading toward the where the, the, the torpedoes are going, if you hold off on lock, he's not going to know that he's been pinged. So I usually try to hold pinging as long as possible because they will go after the the target uh, if you don't ping first. Now you'll notice that he's broken lock. He's broken lock and I can't get the ping. But what he doesn't do is he doesn't change his, his, his direction. He keeps going the same way. So I get a four hit anyway. So, or a three hit, sorry. So if you're, if you're going to use your, your, um, Repair to break lock on a on a torpedo. Turn, move, get out of the way, right? Because they're still going for that last point where you were. And so what that means is it's like using chaff in the plane. You, you don't just keep going straight. You've got to move. You've got to turn. So now, if you fire from operational depth, you'll see that they will track. But what I want to point out with this is that. When you're there, they now have. They're still going at the ship, but they're going at the ship not only on an angle, but on a depth angle as well. So that's two angles that got to converge, not one. So I have yet to hit uh, a ship when I fire while at operational depth. And I think it's because it's, it's calculating two different uh, uh, trajectories. You know, it's, it's calculating the, the, you know, the, the X and the Y kind of thing, right? So you're going to find that you're, you have to shoot a periscope depth. I've yet to hit at, at, uh, at a, a depth that um, is deep. Now, this guy, uh, I just wanted to show this part to see where we were. I, I shot it a few times. Uh, again, I launched early and I ping. And I do hit him. But then he's going to pull a dodge on me that I... That's really interesting, and, and, and battleships do manage to dodge quite a few of, of, of my torpedoes. So I'm going to come back around now. I've got about a few hits on them. Uh, and I'm going to surface, and I'm going to actually have what I think I've got a good shot, right? He's coming in. I surface. I wait till he starts to turn. I drop the two torps. And he's turning into it. And I didn't even tell him yet, so I pinged him now. Now he knows I'm there. Most battleships continue to turn to the right because, you know, it, it's it's sort of like uh, second nature. You want to turn into the torpedo. But I think that actually helps the torpedo when you turn into him because look at this guy. He turns away and they all miss. So I'm wondering if that's a better way to dodge homing torpedoes is turning away from them. The I'm not sure. Uh, it's very hard for me to see how they do it because I, I, I'm not, I don't have a top-down view. But he did, he did turn away, and I did miss. Now, this is uh, a cachalot, and I'm, I'm on the surface. And I spent a lot of time on the surface because it has very little uh, in the way of uh, some uh, diving power, right? Six minutes and no consumable. So, I'm just kind of zip through here and get up here. And the thing about this boat is that it does have that 11 kilometer plus uh, torpedo range. So I'm, I'm playing it. I'm doing most of my shooting on the surface. Because I, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to submerge, right? In, in this regard, like around here, he has no, he's no buddies, he's no friends. I'm just shooting up torpedoes in the line. I'm not pinging him until the torpedoes are a good chunk of distance away. So I missed my first ping. I'm going to ping him again. And I, and I started doing it this way because, uh, again, if you ping early and then fire, he's got, he knows you're pinging him, he knows you're there, and he has a lot more time to react. Like right now he just got pinged, so he doesn't realize how close the torpedoes are to him. And look at that. I'm going to hit him now. Bam, four hits. 
So he, he drops his, his planes to come at me and get me. I turn away. Throw another one out at him. I dive. Now, they're, they're already tracking on the previous ping. And I can turn around back in and let that previous ping go, right? I can, I can let it next. And I can, I can ping him now at uh, uh, Submerge as well. I don't have to surface to ping him once the, once the torps are fired. I can maintain that ping at operational depth. But you should fire at periscope depth or the surface. Now, look how many torpedoes this guy has already taken. And, and, and you know, he's going to take... Uh, looks like he's going to take two more. And he does. So... That's a lot of torpedoes that guy just took. If those were destroyer torpedoes, he'd be dead. Enemy submarine spotted. And again, I'm going to fire early. Before I ping. Now I decided to ping because he 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 he, he reversed course, right? We've so that second set of torps was going to be going the wrong the wrong way. You notice I've slowed down too, because again I don't want to close within. Uh, Detection range. If I can shoot from long range, I'll, I'll do that. Um, another reason is is when I'm playing the the U-boat. There's some more torps, right? So when I'm playing the U-boat, I, I need to get a lot closer. And you know, a lot of battleships, once they find you, once they see you, or if they know roughly where you are because your torps are coming in, they will charge you and they'll try and sit on top of you so that you. You uh, run out of uh, battery power, and then you surface, and their secondaries kill you. So, uh, in order to to not close as much, I will slow down, right? Because once because once they're on top of you, they can stay on top of you if they've got you detected. Because you move 15 knots, and a battleship moves like 24 at this at this uh, level, right? So you can't you can't get away. So I slow down so that I don't close too rapidly. Again, I got four hits on this guy. If, if I was a destroyer, he'd probably be dead, right? Now, he almost dodged them. I don't know why he didn't, but he almost did. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I don't think... I don't think the... Uh, I don't think the subs are overpowered. Yeah, I, I just think that they could have balanced them differently, right, without using the ping, because the ping is, is, a, is a bone of contention, right? So here are my thoughts on why... They're not overpowered. So they move slow. 50 knots submerged, 24, 29 knots on the surface. Uh, there's submerged timer, so the cash slot is 6 minutes. The U69 is 640. It's also got 90 seconds worth of consumables, but there's a 90 second cooldown in there. They get four torps in a launch, like a DD gets like 10. Uh, each torp is roughly half damage of a DD torp. Um, and the ping can be removed with the repair consumables. So if you, if you need to, you can, you can dodge it. Um, I wouldn't say easily, but you can, you can, you know, there's a, there's a dodge potential there. Um, so I, I don't believe they're overpowered. I think that if they were going to, they really wanted to, to balance them a different way, they could have, like I said, made the torps super short range, not, not, uh, not homing and just double the damage to like even a DD's damage, or maybe even a little higher than a DD's damage since they only get four. And if they have to get close, then if you're, Destroyers are playing anti-sub role. They can probably kill it really quick, right? So that's that's what I think there. Now, how to play 
your submarine good? Well, here's here's some tips I think is is a good idea. Now these tips aren't obviously for every situation. I mean, sometimes you're you're gonna not want to do any of these things, but in general, I think that if you can get away with it, shoot the torps first and then wait to the last minute to ping, right? Like if a ship is heading in one direction, he's not changing direction, and they don't know you're there yet, why unzip your fly, right? So shoot first, wait, ping, <clears throat> you know? And then if you're shooting, you know, you're gonna have to be at periscope depth uh, to do that, um, or at the surface if you're out of, out of uh, you know, out of detection range, simply because I find that every time I've shot uh, at operational depth, I, I always missed. Uh, so you'll find that you need to ping subs while you're submerged. Uh, for some reason, the, the ping uh, when you're at periscope depth just goes right along the surface, so it misses. Um, sometimes it may be advantageous to delay your second torp shot in case lock is lost. Like uh, if you're shooting at a, at a battleship, let's say, and, he, and you saw him burn and you saw the, the fire go out, odds are he used his repair module, you know, shoot two, right? Uh, but I mean, if you're not sure, like, like against a submarine, if the guy knows what he's doing, he'll know to break lock and 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 try and uh, surface, you know. Uh, so I always delay, or not always, sorry. I, I recommend sometimes in some cases delay that second shot until you know you can get it in. Now, dodging uh, dodging homing torpedoes is a lot like dodging a, a missile, right? If if you shot your homing torpedo at extreme range, like nine kilometers, uh, let's say, and the guy turns to dodge and that's going to make your torpedo turn right so if you wind up let's say you know your your torpedo is zigzagging toward the target well that's all extra kilometers so it is entirely possible that you'll just run out of speed because you know you used all of your torpedo energy uh going side to side right so um that you can use that to dodge so if you if you're if you get pinged if, if you have any kind of, like, if you're a German battleship or, or whatever, and you have any kind of, like, sonar to, to, to see those coming, you, like, pop it, right? And uh, break lock when you see the, 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 the homing torpedoes and then turn. Turn as fast as you can, right? And so you might have, uh, you know, between 7 and 10 to 12 seconds worth of, of where the submarine cannot land another hit on you. Uh, with a ping. So if you're just going to keep going in the same direction, it doesn't matter, right? You're going to get hit by the torpedoes anyway, because it's just like, uh, you know, a, a DD that just shot at you where you were going to be. If you don't change your direction, you're going to get hit anyway. So uh, if you're a submarine and you do this, another thing to do is change your depth as well, right? So turn and change depth. And then uh, if, if you're too close to your target and you're fighting another submarine and there's friendlies around you surface and boogie out of there because you can you know if you're too close your your, your torpedoes won't arm so you got to get away and so if he is stuck under underwater because if he surfaces your 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 side's going to wreck him then you use your surface speed to get away uh you know turn around maneuver whatever it needs to get back where you can dive properly lock him up and, and kill him right so now if you're being hunted, break toward enemy zone. Now that's counterproductive, you're thinking, because, well, wait a second, that means you're going to close on the destroyer or whatever, uh, and you can't shoot at him because you're inside your, your minimum range. That's not quite what I mean. I mean that, you know, he's coming on you, he's on top of you already, right? Or even close enough that he's on top of you, uh, or even in a, a mile or two, right? Like, but whatever it's coming, he's coming your direction. Now, if he doesn't see which way you, you're turning, let's say you're, you're, you're doing a 90 degree angle, but for whatever reason, you can get down low enough uh, and he's not pinged you. If you break in toward uh, their territory, I found that in most cases, when he's looking for you, he's looking for you toward your home plate, you know, toward your friendly ships. So uh, you can get away that way. And this is when being the German submarine really is helpful because you have that, you know, that consumable that freezes your battery for 30 seconds so it doesn't use any charge right so in that regard I suggest using your battery consumable earlier not later right because you have three of them but there's 90 seconds uh, in between so you're gonna find as you approach the combat area 
that there are periods of time where you're going to need to be submerged, whether there's a, a plane over you or, or for whatever reason, or you want to run deep for like a minute and a half, let's say, well, 30 seconds of that can be on your consumable, right? You know, if you're going to run deep and try and try and try and break past, uh, you know, the enemy, uh, you know, the other team's ships, right? So I would use your battery consumable a little earlier. And then as you noticed in my last, uh, example where I did 14 torpedo hits and no kills, you know, your torpedoes do half the damage of a sub torpedo. So when you hit with four, it's like hitting with two or sorry, half the damage of a destroyer torpedo. So when you hit with four, it's like you're really hitting with two, right? So I would, whenever possible, look at ships, if you can swing it, that have damage on them or are close to dying or whatever. Like I said, the most I've killed, uh, the most ships I've got was three. And it wasn't because I, I, I battered them down with torps. You just don't have the kind of battery power needed to constantly circle a guy, get up to periscope depth, fire your four torpedoes and dive again. You're going to run out of battery power. So um, if you're, if you're going to do that, I would go in, be at periscope depth, fire your torpedoes, kind of get out if you can. Like, like you know, you're, you're basically doing a, a like into range, fire, out of range thing uh, with the cash a lot. Um, but if you have to get close, that's when you're gonna have to start thinking about, you know, battery power, right? So be on the surface as much as possible. And so um, that's pretty much all I got to say. Like I said, this was me coming back to the game after two years. This is what I've noticed. Obviously, if you've been playing this game for two years, you've probably noticed a whole bunch of mistakes I made. Um, but I think this is more of a, a if, if you look at this as a guy who hasn't played in two years because I didn't like the smoke ship idea of it, you know, coming back and seeing what's changed and, and my opinion on how it's changed and will this encourage other people who have not, uh, you know, played this game for a while to, to come back, right? And, uh, you know, personally, I'm probably going to play a little bit more, but I uh, what I'm hoping happens is that, you know, the holy grail of they make smoke defensive only like you can't shoot out of it or you can't see out of it right you can you know uh and that would force destroyers to be more you know sub hunters like they should be instead of battleship hunters like they shouldn't be right but but we'll see anyway uh, i'm probably gonna get back to making conquerors blade videos and things like that also if you do like occasionally watching my f14 videos um there's going to be a few more of those because i finally managed to figure out how to record uh, my Rio's um, screen as well. So I'm going to be able to put picture in picture of the uh, F-14 Rio and pilot. So uh, stand by and look for that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you again at Conqueror's Blade. Oh, I also just joined uh, Alan uh, Apogee's CB analysis board. So hopefully I'll see you guys over there. Cheers and have a good one.